What's up guys, welcome back. Recently someone asked me uh, what I thought which particular two card combination in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh was the best the game has ever seen throughout its history. Um, so pretty much from like 2003 up until this point in 2018. I've been playing the game since the beginning and for me uh, that was kind of an interesting question. So I did some research and made a list with about like 40 or 50 combos. So again too much to go into detail here in one video but I'll leave it to pretty much like a top 10 best or you know most impactful two card combinations the game has ever seen since it started back in 2003 ish of course like always, this list is not final, this is just an opinion and I'm very very sure that I'm overlooking cards, that I missed combos, so again, if I missed any, feel free to let me know down below. To shorten everything down to, you know, the final 10 two card combinations, there's a couple of things that I'm taking into account here, like for example the power of a particular combo during its time and format slash metagame, the consistency to some extent, and also one of the most important things here uh, is I think nostalgia. Okay. Let's start. Let's start off with number 10 and that's Tricksters and I'm looking at well, not really like like uh, in themed Trickster uh, cards but mainly the Troll and Lock combination with of course a th the Trickstars themed card being the reincarnation. So the fact that Troll and Lockbird is such a great hand trap in today's format just increases the potential of this degenerate combo and in all honesty I think one of the most degenerate two card combos the game has ever seen. The fact that Trickster Reincarnation is searchable off of multiple search options in the deck and the fact that it's still a 3 in the TCG makes this combo here in the TCG much more consistent compared to the OCG where Reincarnation is at 1 I believe. Throughout most panelist predictions, uh, players have been asking to deal with this particular combo but if Konami is going to respond with any form of panelist, we don't know. Number 9, we have Mermils and Atlanteans and basically the combination of either Mermil and Bistius with, you know, Neptibus or Diva. Here, and I'm sure in many other combos shown in the video, there are of course more variations of the featured two card combination. I mean, in this case, next to Abistius, both Prince and Diva or Diva would do it. Although, you know, Diva might give you the extra option on your side of the field to go for a potential Link Summon ride. One of the combos shown here was where Firewall was still unlimited in the TCG, so you could easily end your field with something like Bahamut Shark totally awesome to negate something from your opponent and of course we're able to search out Mooling Glacia to delinquent duo your opponent from two cards. So pretty much leaving them at four cards during their turn. Mermils slash Atlanteans had their most dominant format in the same one as Fire Fist a couple of years ago so now the deck is still strong with multiple two card combinations leading at least pretty much leading to devastating boards but again the biggest weakness of Mermils is something like it going first and hand traps, right? Number 8, Chaos slash Airblade decks, you know, with multiple straddles. And I'm looking at the combination of Dimension Fusion and Dark Magician of Chaos. Good old Dimension Fusion. You know, those were the times where this card was a 3. And of course, with Demok legal pre errata, by the way. Since, as you know, Demok, Dark Magician of Chaos, got an errata a couple of years ago. That from then on, Demok was, uh, you know, as soon as it was summoned, you could only get the surge effect or get back effect during your own end phase so tremendously slowing down the card of course by a lot uh, since again in the past uh, this specific two card combination lead to so many degenerate loops FDKs like for example the magical explosion one and of course OTKs as you see here but again the emergency ban list took um, you know settled the deal with dimension fusion and later the errata on Demok. Um, well, eventually took down pretty much the cart as well. 
number seven windups and of course this particular two card combination can, we cannot miss on these kind of lists um, wind up magician and wind up shark this combo is so so nostalgic that as soon as someone mentions the two words magician shark there's immediately like flashing all kind of bs in my mind wind ups were one of the most most dominant decks in 2012 but got a huge uh, hit you know but they pretty much got like a huge hit on the ban list leaving zen mighty at one for example and hunter banned of course so dealing with the hand loop then again wind ups were able to recover and just seem to be stronger compared to how it was before the ban list and you know with the wind up hand loop now it had like multiple extra deck tools and you know the famous shock lock was pretty much born as well. Having access to photon pepper operative, um, this two card combination both magician shark was able to pump out multiple level fours and end its board with like a full powered shock lock turn one a banished wind up rabbit as well i mean so much degeneracy here it was a time where you know you were oh, at least hoping uh, hoping that uh, you would at least open with one of your three maxis main decked maxis well this feels like 2018 right Number 6, Performages and Pals. And I'm, again, um, I'm looking here at uh, Plush Fire, at least the combination of Plush Fire and Luster Pendulum. Performages and Pals is by far one of the most and best decks that Yu-Gi-Oh! has ever seen. It was raining terror in the OCG for multiple months, and by the time the TCG finally got all the most important pieces, um, you know, to start playing the deck, Konami TCG almost immediately hit multiple cards in a Performages and Pals deck to deal with the terror of monkey board clash of draco rivals wavering eyes and of course flame mascot one of the powerful combos the deck had um, again as i mentioned before was luster pendulum and flame mascot next to other combinations of course but if i think of like a performances and pals deck this combo comes up first the fact that you know we are still playing or we were still playing master rule 3 Prelinks, the combination of Luster Pendulum and Flame Mascot was just so so strong, Set them, setting up your extra deck, giving you a potential monster on the field for a possible rank 4 exceed play, being the king of the feral imps, searching, setting up your scale and again pre-master uh, rule for prelinks, you know the pendulum mechanic was so so busted. Number 5, Burning Abyss. Again, we have multiple options here. Um, let's say Tour Guide being at 3 or, you know, opening with both Terra Top and Tour Guide was just pure, pure shenanigans and immediately pumped out multiple um, exceeds, uh, big boards for the BA player, netting them so much advantage, right? Then again, the fact that the BA consists, consists of basically all floaters makes the Dante Seer loop quite deadly and very hard to break. The times where all Dante, Beatrice and Seer were all at 3 or you know were able to be allowed to at least were allowed to play at multiple copies per deck made BA one of the best grinding decks ever just you know by utilizing uh, this particular two card combination of Seer Dante. Number 4, we have Dinosaurs, a deck that won Worlds last year and immediately lost multiple tools after it. True King Dinosaurs was a very disgusting deck and depending on which version you were playing, you could end up making a very solid first turn field of multiple negations uh, to leave your opponent of like no chance of um, you know ever playing, the, ever playing the game during their first turn. A very standard and easy combo to pull off was having the baby Sarasaurus or you know a baby dinosaur and draconic diagram giving you access to a potential rank 9 exceed play and the rank 4 one. Dang Long gave the deck a huge boost but as you know immediately bite the dust um, you know, after like worlds for us TCG players. Of course, the dinosaur deck lost some important tools, but lost. The deck was also very, very weak to hand traps, so a well timed Ash Blossom on your Raptor or a Ghost Ogre on Diagram could immediately lose you the game, right? Number 3, and again, both, at least all three decks here in the top, I mean, they are so close to each other. Again, it's, it's just. 
all of them could be at place number one. So number three we have Zodiax, one of the best archetypes slash decks ever created in the game. Whoever thought that making like a one card exceed was a great and balanced play wasn't the greatest mind in terms of balanced and fair gameplay. Zodiac got a couple of waves of uh, support and had again multiple two card combos leading to degenerate boards featuring Dryadent, Daigusto Emerald and of course multiple draws to increase your chances of drawing into multiple hand traps to again stop your opponent from pretty much playing the game during their first turn. The combination of both Red and Barrage is one of those combos that lead to so many BS, so many pluses for your opponent and heck I'm even leaving out cards like Instant Fusion, Northern and Fusion Substitute to make an even bigger field and of course more combos giving you even more draws. So speaking of unfair gameplay here. Number 2, Necros. Next to Zodiax, one of the best decks ever created since, you know, pretty much the whole deck is a search engine. Each card could search out each other and all the monsters were, you know, main deck and searchable answers to your opponent's stronger monsters. The deck packed everything from consistency to power, but there's one combo that took the cake here in the beloved Necros mirror matches from a couple of years ago and that's, well, basically any two card combination of, you know, a mind you or Senju and then Unicore or, you know, um, the ritual spell, right? And that's a gin lock. Very, very easy to pull off. Again, it's just the mirror match of Necros was just so, so disgusting. And even then, during that metagame, players were main decking side decked cards like Book of Eclipse, Bull Blader, or even DD Warrior Lady to answer their opponent's gin lock. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, right? Number one, again, but there are so many, I mean, so many honorable mentions. I mean, uh, Elder for the Ritual Beast, Elder Kanahawk, uh, Angeli, Milfoy for Madolches. Um, we had Venus and World Legacies, for example. Uh, Dragonfly, Hornet, Stormfort, Vanity's Fiend, or, well, a Monarch Summon. Scientist, Turtle, Graceful Charity, Sinister Serpent, Prisma, Test Tiger, um, Necro Valley Royal Tribute, The Shoot, Mind Crush. I mean, there are so many combos here that didn't make it to the top uh, 10 cut but again there's again so many combos that were able or should be mentioned here in the video last place number one spirals again one of the more recent decks here and again like i mentioned before we have multiple two cards combinations to be featured here since the deck was so consistent and it is also developed multiple times throughout multiple formats opening up like a two card combination of let's say spiral resort and agent already leads to like a Spiral Link to Tutor Master Plant, and from there you could easily start off your combos, pre-nightmare, post-nightmare, slash Troymare extra link shenanigans, leaving you with sleeper, popping your opponent stuff, I mean, and of course extra linking your opponent, trigate your opponent from some, you know, it's it's just pure, pure shenanigans. So Again, as I mentioned before, I'm definitely forgetting cards, I'm definitely forgetting combos. If you think, um, you know, other things should be on this list, definitely let me know. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave a comment or a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave him signing out. Peace.